And it's impossible to practice social distancing at a crowded concert, for example, or a basketball game, or even at the starting line of a foot race. When organizers canceled the Indy Mini Marathon, thousands of runners were undoubtedly disappointed, particularly the handful of folks who have run it every race since it started nearly 50 years ago. Adam Pinsker has the story. It's a tradition that spanned five decades, but on May the 2nd, the streets of Indianapolis will be quiet. The Indy Mini Marathon scheduled for that day is canceled because of the coronavirus. I'm certainly disappointed. Mike Vollmer of Indianapolis is one of six people who has run in every mini marathon since the event started in 1977. For him, running is part of his lifestyle. I started doing it because it, it, was, it could be a, a pretty much a year-round general health and fitness, uh, weight control, stress uh, control, um, you know, psychological well-being, things like that. Um, so that has, it served me well. The Indy Mini Marathon is one of the largest and longest running races in the country, drawing runners from not just Indiana and the rest of the country, but overseas as well. Last year, 24,000 runners, walkers, and people in wheelchairs participated in either the Mini Marathon or the 5K. It isn't just the Mini Marathon that's been canceled. A number of other events leading up to the race, including the big kickoff event, as well as educational programs for kids, also canceled because of COVID-19. We recognize that there's uh, much more significant hardship that's going on right now, and we just want to be as supportive as we possibly can. Brian says the planning for each year's mini marathon begins almost immediately after the previous year's race ends. Race organizers have already paid for many of the expenses for this year's race. You start ordering shirts and medals, you start warehousing product, um, you start uh, contracts with a lot of vendors, whether it's for uh, start finish line. Um, uh, bike rack, porta john security personnel. That means no refunds will be issued to runners who have already signed up and paid their registration fees. Runners will have the option of using this year's fees for next year's race or donating the entry fees to some of the nonprofit educational organizations the festival supports. You have an opportunity now through the end of June to get out either, whether it's a treadmill in your house or whether it's uh, out in your, in your neighborhood outside, um, to mark off that distance and complete your 5K or your half marathon challenge, and we will mail you your medal. This is the medal for the first. Vollmer says he plans to do the virtual race, but he'll miss the camaraderie and supportive atmosphere that just can't be replicated running alone or at a small group. Social distancing could not have happened in those races because throughout the entire race, you could run, unless you were at the front of the pack, and reach out and touch someone all around you. The only thing that changed was the color of the t-shirt. Vollmer has a treasure trove of race paraphernalia, including a certificate and a medal from the very first Indy Mini Marathon 44 years ago, a day he remembers clearly. The first two years, both of them were 90 degrees at race time and full sun and about 80% humidity. So they were just really miserable. But while bad weather, injuries, or family events weren't enough to keep Vollmer from partaking in this May tradition, it took a pandemic to keep him at home. Vollmer says the 500 Festival and the Races Alumni Club have kept the official statistics on individuals who have run the most consecutive races. He's still unsure how an act of God like the coronavirus will affect the record keeping. Whether they designate that as the street continuing or not, uh, is really not for me to say. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Adam Pinsker.